Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. But first, are you using new RPM motor oil in your car? If so, then you're already using the oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. If not, then now's the time for you to switch over to new RPM, the oil that more than meets the heavy-duty motor oil requirements of all car manufacturers. And be sure you always get new RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Off the record, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I need you to do a little job for me. Somebody, I don't know who, seems to feel that I would be better dead. Of course you've heard of me, Dan Dana, radio commentator. My broadcast is called Off the Record. Well, strictly on the record, I've been getting a number of anonymous letters suggesting that if I don't, don't change, change my, my tune, tune, my career will come to an untimely end. Suppose you drop in my office at the radio station tomorrow afternoon about three. George? Yes, Angel? This man must be crazy. Somebody's threatened to kill him and he acts as blase about it as though he were buying a new necktie. Well, he probably feels that way about it, too. Haven't you ever heard him on the air? No, I don't think so. Well, if you had, you'd know it. Crusader type. Rips the daylights out of everybody he thinks is out of line. I'm surprised somebody hasn't bumped him off before now. Well, if he needs protection... Oh, he'll get it. A fee is a fee. Make a note, Brooksy. This afternoon, 3 o'clock, Dan Dana. All right, Babs, type up that march and bring it in. I'll get the rest of my notes. Yes, sir. All right, now... What is it you wanted to see me about? Uh, I'm George Valentine. This is Miss Brooks. Val... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I sent for you. Yeah, that's right. Three o'clock. You're punctual. It's good. I have to prepare the rest of my broadcast for tonight. Now, here are the letters. The rest is up to you. Oh, yes, I've made out this check for your fee. Oh, thanks. Hmm. All these notes are typewritten, huh? That's right. Haven't any idea who sent them. May I see one of them, George? Oh, sure. Sorry, Angel. As you'll notice, they all suggest that I know too much, talk too much, maybe even live too much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dana, just as a starter, could you tell us, haven't you made enemies with your broadcasts? Enemies? Certainly. I've stepped on toes when I've revealed local corruption. Someone is afraid I'll ruin him with what I'll dig up. But if you think I'm going to stop... Oh, I don't, of course. Well, that's the way I've built my reputation, Valentine. That's the way I'll continue to build it. You certainly believe in living dangerously, don't you, Mr. Dana? That sort of thing pays off, Miss Brooks. All right, Dana. I'll do what I can to uncover this person who's threatening you. But uh, just for a little help, whom are you working on at the moment? I'm digging up a lot of stuff on Corey Dennis. You mean the big politician? That's right. I think the man's crooked. I can't prove it yet, but I'll have my report in this afternoon. And give it on your broadcast? <laughs> Naturally. And now I have work to finish? And so do I. Okay, Dana. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Valentine. You might listen in tonight. Nine o'clock? Sure, sure. We'll be listening. George, this is the craziest case you've ever taken. You haven't a thing to start with. Yeah, that's right. So, I think we'll have to talk with the guy who hired this fearless Fosdick, his boss. His boss? Who? Manager of the station, Emerson Craig. I saw his name on a door when we came in. Let's find him. Dan Dana? Yes, I hired him, Mr. Valentine. Well, pardon me, Mr. Craig, but uh, you don't sound as though you were very happy about it. Frankly, I'm not. I hired Dana for the commentator spot. Yes, I did. 
because I was told to. But you're the manager of the station, Mr. Craig. It looks <laughs> like you... There happens to be an owner of the station, too, Miss Brooks. He ordered me to hire Dana. Oh, you had somebody else in mind? Oh, I certainly. I had another of our announcers all groomed for the job. Bill Trask. But the boss didn't say it that way. Uh-huh. I gather you don't like the way Dana operates. I don't. He fancies himself a crusader. Crusaders are always trouble. I'm interested in the good of this station. You want to know something? Well, I'd like to know anything that would protect a man's life. A man's life? <laughs> Listen. Every week, the day after Dana's broadcast, I'm sent a clip from a tape recording and what he said the night before. Does Mr. Dana know about that? Why, of course he does. Certainly. I've told him time and time again. But he pays no attention. Well, just one more thing, Mr. Craig. I'm hired to dig into this thing for Dana, but I'll have to know more about it. Who's close to him? <laughs> Nobody, really. Oh, his wife, I suppose. But I understand they're not on very good terms lately. There's been some talk of his running around with Babs Lewis, his secretary. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, it won't do any harm to have a talk with Mrs. Dana anyway. Thanks, Mr. Craig. Not at all. Only one thing. I'm afraid if you're planning on protecting Dana, you're wasting your time. There's the door, George. This is the way out. Finally, yeah. The guy that designed this radio station must have built the catacombs. Come on, Angel. What's next, darling? You still haven't anything to go on. No, not yet. But we have found out that Dana could have some enemies. Well, of course. The crooked politicians he's after. And the man we just saw upstairs, Craig. And Dana's wife, who thinks he's running around with another woman. Oh, here we are. Let's get out. Why not start by seeing this politician, Corey Dennis? Uh-uh. If he's been sending threatening notes to Dana and tape recordings to the manager, he's not going to admit it, is he? No, I guess not. Hey, wait a minute, Brooksy. Let's go this way. All right. What are you... George! Hey, come on, Angel. Get back under the marquee. But, but that thing on the sidewalk, it almost hit us. Looks like it was meant to hit us. Lucky we changed our course. What is it, George? It's a sandbag. One of the things they use in studios for sound effects. Came from one of those windows up there. But... How could it just fall out Couldn't. of... It was dropped out on purpose. Oh, George, I'm weak. Can't blame you for that. Valentine! Hey, Valentine. Oh, Dana, what are you so excited about? I saw you leaving the building. Something's just come up, Valentine. Yeah? Something just came down, too. Know anything about that sandbag there on the sidewalk? No. What about it? Well, it was dropped from somewhere up there. It just missed us. Yeah? Well, probably just an accident. Listen, I, I just got another threatening note. It just came. Special delivery. Well, for once, you sound excited, Mr. Dana. Hmm. Here, take it. it Says if I tell anything about the Dennis affair in my broadcast tonight, as I said I would, I'll never go on the air again. Well, that's putting it right on the line, certainly. Now, look, Dana, I have a suggestion that'll save us both a lot of trouble. Yeah? What's that? Don't tell anything about the Dennis affair tonight. Oh, I'll tell something, all right, and it'll be something nobody expects. I've finally got the facts. Mm -hmm. Well, it's your neck, Buster, not mine. <laughs> Better listen in, Valentine, because maybe after tonight I won't need your services at all. are working against the best interests of the people in this city has been stated and proved many times. This commentator is called Shots and named names. One George? of those names is well known yeah, to every citizen. Get to the point? He's a man of power and Let's... great influence. We've made it a point to unearth all possible information about this man. Very well, ladies and gentlemen, the facts are all in. And the result will be as much of a surprise to you as it was to me. Now, in the case of Mr. Corey Dennis, the facts, and here they are. Only this afternoon... Oh, oh George! George. Ah. Oh, Dan. George, Dan. that sounded like a shot. Exactly what it was, Brooksy. We'd better hot-foot it down there and find out the condition of our client. Just a minute, you people. Where do you think you're going? This is Hi, well, Lieutenant Johnson. How are you? I might have known it. You've got a client here someplace. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Lieutenant. How is he? How is who? My client. Who's your client? Look, Lieutenant, let's not go into an Abbott and Costello routine. How's Dan Dana? Oh, that's your client. Or was. No fee for you, my friend. No uh, case. He's dead. Dead? That's right. Oh, yeah. 
I sort of suspected that when I heard his show on the air. Who killed him? If I knew that, I wouldn't be standing here gabbing with you. All right, then. How was he killed? Shot, of course. Through the window of that client's booth up there. Deserted corridor upstairs. Nobody saw anybody. Then you don't even have a suspect, Lieutenant? Of course I've got a suspect. When this Dana had just opened his mouth to give the lowdown on a political big shot and was murdered before he could get it out, huh, wouldn't that provide a pretty good suspect? You mean Corey Dennis, of course. What does he have to say about it? He doesn't. It so happens he's conveniently out of town. Boys are looking for him, naturally. Oh, naturally, well, looks like when we find him, you'll have your case wrapped up. Sorry I couldn't help you on this one, old boy. Just a minute, Valentine. You don't usually get out of my hair this easy. What's on your mind? Nothing. Nothing. Just have a few people I want to talk to, that's all. See you later, Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid so. George, who are the people you want to see? Well, Mrs. Dana, for one. And Bill Trask, the announcer. And the secretary, Babs Lewis. Just because my client is dead is no reason to quit the case. Especially when we got such a nice fee in advance. Yeah, that's right. Who do we start with? Nobody tonight. Too late. We'll check the addresses first thing in the morning. And then start off with Mrs. Dana. Then you don't think you can help us, Mrs. Dana? No, uh... I'm sorry, I can't. I don't know anything about it. One thing I wanted to ask you, Mrs. Dana. Is it uh, true that you and your husband weren't on very good terms? That's none of your business. Well, I'm sorry, but when a man is dead, those things become everybody's business. Was your husband running around with a secretary? I... I suppose so, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were pretty jealous, weren't you? Of course I was jealous. Who wouldn't be? But if you think I killed Dan, you're dead wrong. I suppose you have an alibi for the time of his death anyway, Mrs. Dana. By... Uh, of course I do. I, I was at a bridge party. Got there at 8 o'clock and didn't You leave. heard the broadcast from there? The shot? Yes, I called the station and they told me Dan was dead. The police are going to call me this morning to go down to the morgue. Yes, I know. Well, just one more thing, Mrs. Dana... Do you have any idea who did kill your husband? No, no. Probably one of those big shots he was out to get. He was a fool. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dana. Come on, Brooksy. Goodbye, Mrs. Dana. Well, all roads seem to lead back to Mr. Corey Dennis, Angel. Guess we'd better see him after all. Well, George, you don't know where he is. Lieutenant Johnson said this morning they hadn't found him yet. Yeah, that's right. But I happen to know that whenever anything happens, this Dennis spends a few days at a certain golf club. We'll tee off for there. What? Oh, Mr. Dennis. What? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I'm Dennis. Oh, I'm very sorry to disturb your shot there. Uh, my name is Valentine. This is Miss Brooks. Yeah, how do you Hello. do? Valentine, huh? I've heard of you. You're a detective? Uh, well, something along that line. Mr. Dennis, I suppose you know the police are trying to locate you. They are? Why? Something in connection with the death of Dan Dana, the commentator, I believe. You, uh, you heard that he was murdered. Oh, yes, yes, I did. Too bad. Of course, I didn't quite agree with his tech. I believe they'll want to ask you where you were around 925 last night, Mr. Dennis. Thought I'd beat them to it. Last night? Why, I was out of town, making a speech. The meeting lasted from 8.30 until, uh, oh, about 10. But why do you ask me this? The police seem to think you're their number one suspect, Mr. Dennis. I? Suspect for a murder? <laughs> why, that's ridiculous. Why would I want to kill Dana? Well, now, Mr. Dennis, they seem to feel you had a motive. Dana had unearthed a lot of stuff on you, and he was just on the point of putting it on the air when he was killed. Oh, that... Yes, Dana did have the idea that I was being crooked about something. But he found out differently. Too bad for my sake, he didn't finish his broadcast last night. What do you mean by that? He called me on the phone late yesterday afternoon, just before I left for my speaking engagement. He apologized, said the facts proved he was completely wrong. And he was going to say so on the air. Oh. He was also going to call the names of the people who were guilty of this fraud. He was? Who were they? 
Mr. Valentine, I haven't the slightest idea. He didn't tell me. But I might suggest that if you can find out who they are, you'll find your murderer. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Say, I know you'll enjoy this. You've heard me mention my neighbor Whitey, and I'm sure you know how much he delights in kidding me about the extra care I take of my car. Well, the other morning, I looked out our kitchen window and spotted Whitey trying to start his car. But the battery was dead. So real casually, not letting on I knew about his battery, I called him up on the phone and offered him a ride to work. Of course, he accepted, and of course, he didn't mention his dead battery. Well, sir, all the way to town, I told him what a good idea it is to have your battery checked regularly by the car savers at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations. Then I mentioned that a battery just has to be inspected regularly in order to perform its best. Then I said to Whitey, why, anybody knows that if a battery is weak, it should be recharged by car savers. They give it a fast, powerful charge the kind that gives new life to tired-out batteries. Poor Whitey. He never did come out and admit that the battery in his car was dead, and I never let on that I knew. But as he got out of the car, the sheepish, embarrassed look on his face was all the reward I needed. So, friends, if you want to avoid the embarrassment of having to hitch a ride some frosty morning, better drive in soon and have your battery checked, and if needed, recharged by the car savers at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're engaged by Dan Dana, a brash and fearless young radio commentator, to find out who has been sending him threatening letters. But before you can really get started on the job, you find yourself working for a client who is no longer in the land of the living. Two people you've talked to have seemingly perfect alibis, the dead man's wife and the big-shot politician he's been out to expose. If your name is George Valentine, you decide to go back to another theory. George. Yes, Angel. I know you'll laugh at me, but I think coming to see this announcer, what's his name? Trask, Bill Trask. Well, I think it's foolish. Just because Dana got the job this Trask person wanted is no reason for him to kill... Yes? Oh, hello. Mr. Trask? Yes, that's right. Well, my name is Valentine, Mr. Trask, and this is Miss Brooks. I'm working on the Dan Dana case. Oh, police. Well, uh, no, not exactly. This is more of a private investigation. May we come in? Oh, why, certainly, certainly. I, I'm forgetting my manners. I'm sorry. Do come in. Thanks. Brooksy. Too bad about Dana, really. Sorry, I can't say he was such a nice chap. No, I know. Now, look, let's not waste time. You hated Dana, didn't you? Hated him? No, no. I, I wouldn't exactly say that. Disliked him, yes, as most everyone did. But I guess the one who killed him must have hated him. Trask, I'm not going to waste your time or mine. Would you mind telling me where you were last night at 9.25? Would I mind telling you? Of course not, my dear chap. I was right here. Here? In your apartment? That's right. It was my night off at the station. Was uh, anyone with you here, Mr. Trask? Oh, I know, but... Well, then you... You don't have an alibi for that time last night, do you? Now, look here, Valentine. If you're trying to accuse me of killing Dana, you're, you're making a big mistake. I'm only interested in facts, Buster. You dislike Dana because he got the job your station manager, Craig, had all set up for you, right? Well, suppose I did. Is that any reason and if to... Dana were out of the way, you'd still get that job, also right? Of course. All right, then. It seems to me you'd better find yourself an alibi for last night or you might be in trouble. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, old boy, even though I'm not guilty of murder, you had me worried about that alibi business for a moment. You mean you do have an alibi, Mr. Trask? Of course I have, and I don't know a better one. Come over here to my breakfast nook. What's your breakfast nook got to do with it? I'll show you. <laughs> Just that. A tape recording machine? That's right. You see, I have a hobby of recording shows off the air. So? 
So last night, I happened to be recording Dan Dana's broadcast. He said he was going to blow the lid off something, and I thought I'd record it. You mean Dana's broadcast is on that tape? The one that's still on the machine? That's just what I mean. So if I were here recording his program off the air, how could I have been at the studio to kill him? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. You, uh, you heard the whole thing, then, the shot and all. Hmm, how could I miss it? Mm-hmm. And uh, when you heard it, what did you do? I turned off the radio and called the studio. The lines were all busy, but I finally got through and asked what had happened. They told me Dana was dead. You might check an operator by the name of Myrtle. She answered the call. Yeah, yeah. Well, that puts you in the clear, all right, Trask. But uh, another thought occurs to me. Yes, what's that? Wouldn't you be the person who's been sending clips from tape recordings of Dana's shows to the station manager? All right. So I am. You see, Valentine, I did want to kill Dana. But professionally, not physically. That was one way I was taking to do it. Uh-huh. Now, if you'd like me to play back this recording to prove what I... No, I've no, that won't be necessary. Sorry to have disturbed you. I wish I might have been of more help to you. Oh, that's all right. I have another call to make, and that may clear up everything. Oh? Where are we going now, George? We're going to see Dana's secretary, Brooksy. Babs Lewis? Yeah, that's right. Think she might help us, Trask? Well, I don't know. I doubt it, but it's worth a try, isn't it? Well, since that's our last hope, I think it is. <laughs> Apartment K, the man said. Now, well, let's see. G-D. You certainly don't think this Babs Lewis would kill her own boss, do you, George? Especially if they were supposed to be going around... Yeah, no, of course not, Angel. I want to see her for two reasons. One, she might have an idea who killed Dana. Two, she might know if Dana was actually going to make a public apology to Corey Dennis. Mm, I'm afraid I'm a little confused. Afraid I am too, Angel. Here we are, apartment K. She isn't in, I guess. She's not. George, you're not going in there. Sure, sure. Have a look around. Never can tell. Maybe the lady kept her records. What is it, George? What'd you say? I didn't. Miss Lewis can't help us much, I'm afraid, Brooksy. What do you mean? On the floor there. The lady happens to be dead. Wait a minute. Dead? Uh, shot through the heart. Been dead for quite a long time, too. George. Yeah? Doesn't this prove something to you? What? Well, don't you see... Maybe Mrs. Dana had a phony alibi. Maybe she killed Dana and then his sweetheart. I doubt it. Oh. Well, all right, then. Maybe Dennis's alibi was a phony. Maybe he killed Dana and then his secretary because she knew what he was going to say. Well, that makes more sense than your first idea, but that would make Johnson right. And Johnson so seldom right, I can't believe it. Lieutenant Johnson could be right once in a while, couldn't he, George? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, I suppose so. Hey, wait a minute. All right, George, I'm waiting. I got a hunch. You have? What is it? Come on. Well, all right, but, uh, darling... Yeah? Don't you think it would be a nice idea to call Lieutenant Johnson and tell him we've managed to find another murder? Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. And I'll also tell him to stand by. Because I think I got an idea how to find out who the murderer is. George? Yeah, Brooksy? Running a good average, aren't we? Breaking into two apartments the same day. And why this one? I want to listen to this recording. Hmm. Now, where can I plug in this cord? Oh, here we are. An outlet on the electric range. One of those names is well known to every citizen. He's a man of power and great influence. We've made it a point to unearth all possible information about this man. Very well, well ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the facts are all in. This is the same as the result will be as I know, much of I know. a surprise to you well, we as it was it. to me. Now, listen. Now, in the case of Mr. Corey Dennis, the facts, and here they are. Only this afternoon... Oh, Dad. Oh, Dad. Oh, George. Shh. What are you trying to do? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a... Uh, something has happened in the studio that, 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 that due to circumstances beyond our control, it would be impossible to continue this broadcast. But please stand by. All right, Brooksy. That does it. Did you tell Johnson to stand by for our call? Yes, George, but th that voice sounded like the manager of the station. What's his name? Craig, that's right, it was. Now, let me have that phone. <laughs> Well, 
Valentine. You in there, Valentine? Yeah, Johnson, come on in. Okay, go on in, Trask. Once more, Lieutenant, what's the meaning of this? Don't ask questions, go on in. Oh, hello there, Trask. Valentine, what are you doing in my apartment? Here on business, Buster, working for the exterminator. Don't be stupid. I was on duty at the studio this afternoon, and this lieutenant came out and got Oh, me... that's all right, Trask. Don't get excited about it. I've fixed everything with Mr. Craig. What do you mean? Yeah, just what do you mean, Valentine? Well, you won't be seeing Mr. Craig for a while, Trask. Oh, Brooksy. Yes, George. Come here a minute, will you? Yes, darling. Uh, Brooksy, when we heard Dana's broadcast, heard the shot over the air, what did we do? Well, we shut off the radio and went down to the station. Oh, that's right. Normal reaction. And, uh... What did Trask here say he did? Well, he said he shut off his radio and called the station on the phone to find... George! Just what are you building up to, Valentine? Yes, what? And why did you get me up here? Because you've been the witness to two murders, Trask. Two... What do you what? mean? What do you mean? You had to be a witness. Because you committed them. You lie. I do. Did you bring that little package, Brooksy? Yeah, here it is, George. Okay, thanks. This is for you, Johnson. And handle it carefully. It's a gun with two shots missing. You'll find those and a couple of bodies you're holding in the morgue. Where did you get that? Hidden in that compartment in the back of your tape recorder, Trask. Too bad you couldn't have had time to get rid of it. All right, how about it, Johnson? Okay. Come along, Trask. I guess you've made your last announcement. I would have to get mixed up with some little smart jerk like you. Get down. Okay, okay, I'm going. George. Yeah, Angel? How did you even suspect Trask? He had a perfect alibi. Well, I'll tell you in a minute, Brooksy. But let's get out of here. I'm hungry. I'll bet you're making frequent shopping trips in town these days to finish your Christmas buying. So it's a good time to remind you that for all-round performance in your car, for those short trips, and for occasional long drives, you need Chevron Supreme's all eight high-performance qualities. Starting, warm-up. Acceleration, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, mileage, area blending, and power. To get all eight, just say fill her up with Chevron Supreme at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Well, you earned your fee, all right, darling. But I still don't understand why you suspected Trask. He had a perfect alibi. Sure he did. He was home recording Dan Dana's broadcast when Dana was killed. Only he wasn't. Oh, now I'm mixed up again. <laughs> you mean somebody else made the recording? Uh, he made it all right, but he wasn't there. You remember when we broke into his apartment to play it back? Sure. It wasn't turned off right after the shot, as he said, because he wasn't there to turn it off. He had the recorder in the breakfast nook in the kitchen, remember? That's right. What's wrong with that? Well, the plug-in cord just reached to the appliance outlet on the range. And that outlet has a timing device. It was set to start at 9 and turn off at 9.30. <laughs> Easy as that. You mean he set the thing, went down and killed Dana? Called from a phone booth somewhere, and he had an airtight alibi. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. You work out so many mechanical things. Sometimes... Why don't you try work to work... out some culinary things? That's a good idea, Angel. A waiter, bring us a menu, please. Oh, George. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Bob Stevenson as Dana, Joe Duvall as Dennis, Alice Reinhardt as Kathy, and George Pembroke as Trask. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Music